Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video on JavaScript series. I hope you're excited. Now this video is going to be a bit, little bit longer because I want to cover a few things in just one video. Things like loops, looping through arrays, break and continue keyword. Shortly, if I would be creating this course for a marketplace, I would love to break it down into smaller videos so that it gives me more times and more lecture numbers, good for sale. But we are on YouTube, chilling out, just you and me, so let's enjoy that. Enjoy the code process here. So first and foremost, how does the for loop actually works? Now there are a couple of ways how we can do it. First and foremost, you can just write the for keyword, drop down your arrow key once and you're gonna see this one here, the second one, and you can hit the tab and it's gonna automatically fill everything for you. If you're coming up from any of the programming language from the past, this is the fastest way of going through this for loop. But for all those, who probably are seeing these for loop structure for the very first time, let me break it down for you. So for loop, or any loop as a given fact, is used to just iterate through over the things. I want to go over the things again and again and do something on that thing. For that, the loops are used. For loop is one of the most famous one, but we have no shortage of these loop. We got while, for each, and a whole bunch of other that you're gonna see. Let's go ahead and get started with the basic for loop. We simply go ahead and say for and parenthesis, and that's like it and most of the structure are similar to if, switch, and all of it. So we go ahead, use like this, and this is the pretty common structure that you're gonna see for for loop as well. But what goes inside the parenthesis is a little bit tricky because previously we were having just if, there was just one conditional, but in the for loop, a whole lot goes in. First and foremost, let's just say we're gonna simply create a let i is gonna be equals to zero. This is the most common thing and put a semicolon here. This i simply stands for index, and simply the loops are majorly used to iterate through over arrays. That's why you're gonna see majority of the time they are started with zero, but the cases can be really, really different. It's up to the implementation what you really want to do. After that, we need something. We have started the loop. We need some end point of the loop as well. We cannot run it for infinity, not good. So we want something to be monitoring that this is where you should stop. So I'm gonna say that I'm gonna hard code the value. So I should be less than 10. So this is my hard coded value. So just keep on running, start with i is equals to zero and keep it running till you hit i is less than 10. But how should I know that i is gonna be increasing so that it reaches at one point of time to the 10? No big deal, we can just simply say i++, which is a very common syntax. It literally translates to i is equals to i plus one. Surely we can go ahead and write that as well. There is no problem, no error in this one. But you're gonna see moreover a shortened notation when you want to just increase one here. But in case when you want to increase two or maybe five at a given time, then there is no option. We cannot do I++++ plus 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 like that. No, that doesn't happen. If you just want to increase one value, then I++ plus plus is used. Now surely there is a plus plus I and I++ plus plus debate going on. I have addressed that pretty in detail in my C++ course, even optimization, which one is better, given all the behind the scene of memory details, but this is not a C++ class, so let's skip the point and just go for plus plus. Surely you're gonna see minus minus as well in some point. In our case, let's go easy one, plus plus. What do you want to do? I just want to log the values. So whatever the I value is, I just want to log it. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And to be honest, I really don't like these kinds of loops, to be honest. Just printing the values or printing patterns is not something my favorite. Here we print out from zero to nine because once it becomes the 10, it just moves at line number four. It says, I'm not gonna go inside, just like if and else. If you want even 10 to be printed, you're gonna see sometimes less than equal to sign as well in that the equality is also being checked. But to be honest, this is the worst way of learning the loop. And uh, you might have already seen some of you that if you're gonna be just printing the patterns and printing these one to 10 or 10 to one, you are gonna be never confident in the loops. And in the programming, confidence is everything. If you're not feeling confidence in printing just the patterns, don't do it. Instead, try to find out other ways of gaining confidence in programming. One of the way which I recommend to all the students is try to have different kind of arrays and loop through them and try to have different values through them. This is one of the fun exercise to do and eventually, once you feel confident, you will be able to print patterns too. So sometimes you don't go from A route, you go with the B route. Okay, so let's go ahead and have some fun with arrays. So let's just say, I'm gonna simply say const my states and you're gonna learn some of the states from my beautiful country, India. So we're gonna start from my state 
Yep, that's big name, but that's my state. Okay, let's have a few more as well. We're gonna go for, uh, let's just say, not Scarlet S. Uh, Delhi, again, don't be like a five-year-old and say, hey, Delhi is technically not a state. Don't be five-year-old. These are just state names. People are learning about India, so let them be. Okay, so we're gonna get a few more random states name, whichever is coming to my name first. And I'm gonna say, uh, okay, a few names. And uh, probably one more. So these are some beautiful states and we're going to go like that. Now, something different, you're going to see that sometimes since this goes actually really, really long, you're going to see sometimes as soon as, just like we did in the objects, remember, we told it as a var user and as soon as we hit that, we hit an enter and we'll write everything comma separated values. We can actually do it with the arrays as well. And in fact, most of the time you're gonna see me doing this exactly. So we go like this and every single value takes another line. Now it doesn't really do anything behind the scene, but I like it this way because it is much more easier to see. And just after Assam, we are gonna add one year here. So 19 of, oops, 1947. Okay, and a comma, don't forget that, okay. So these are the values and we're gonna loop through all of these value. I'm gonna comment these top ones so that it doesn't really disturb us. Now, what we want to do is we want to loop through these one. So how are we gonna loop through? Again, we're gonna use the same for loop. Let's go ahead and have a, some practice up here. In the for loop, we're gonna start with zero. So we're gonna say let i is gonna be equal to zero. No need to call it i, call it h, call it x, call it y, call it even index, doesn't really matter. Then we're gonna say i is gonna be less than or equal to is gonna be 10, but why 10? We don't need to hard code these values. In fact, in the loop cases, you're never gonna be hard coding the values. We want to find out the length or how much long this array is. And we have studied array quite in depth. So I can simply go ahead and say my states dot length, which gives me actual length. And since it gives me actual length and we are starting from zero, that means it's not gonna go out of bound of these arrays. So I'm all good and happy. Okay, then we want to increment it so that it can move on to each object. We're gonna say I++, pretty easy, told you, it's super easy. And then we want to, all we want to do is log I. Okay, there's a small issue here, but let's not get too much worried about that. So we're gonna open this up and clean this up and run this, and there we go. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, didn't expect that because the reason is it's getting all things good, but since we asked it to print just the i, it says, hey, I'm gonna start with zero, and since the highest value of this length is six, I'm gonna go just till the six. Is this what we want? Probably not, not likely. So we're gonna say, I want to print out my states, and if you remember the old videos, we can access the value of each in the array by using these square brackets and mentioning the index value. Zero, one, two, and all of that. So for example, if I want to print out the zero values here, now it's gonna print out the first value, but again and again. So I have this variable i, which I can use inside, and I can loop through all the values from zero to entirety at the end of the array. Let's go ahead and run this and voila, finally, we are able to print out all the values by looping through it. Now notice here one thing very, very strange. It says undefined after Maharashtra. So what is going on in here? Now notice here it says uh, equals. This is the problem because it's going another round and in the another round, it doesn't found anything. So make sure we are cautious and I'm pretty sure most of you didn't even caught this error at the first glance that this is because of equal. And that's my friend is known as debugging. There is no book of it. There is no class of it. Eventually after the years by reading through the errors, you're gonna get through it. I'll try my best to get you introduced with that. Just like this small shock, I'll, I'll keep on sprinkling them. Now let's go ahead and run this. And now this time it's gonna go all okay. Here it looks all okay to have undefined value, but in the real world production app, that's a big nightmare issue. Okay, moving forward, let's have a bit more fun. So what I want now is I don't want this 1947 to be printed. I want only all the strings to be printed or all the state's name. In here comes up is a lifesaver. We definitely can use if, and I'm pretty sure most of you have already guessed that we are about to use that. In case you remember, I told you there is a type of operator which can determine the type of a particular value. So all I can do is I can say my states, I still have access of this i, and I can compare it. I'm gonna say if that value is not equals to string, 
or we can check it for numbers as well. But let's just say we want to check it for the string. I'm going to say, yeah, surely I can go ahead and say these guys, but I don't want to. I'm going to say continue. There we go. Just like that. Okay. Now what's going to happen with the continue keyword? Continue is like continue. It just says uh, keep on continuing for this particular condition. I'm not interested in executing the rest of whatever the code you have in the for block. So that's what it does. It says keep on continuing doing it. And here we can see that it matches the condition that when it is not equal to string, it says, hey, keep on continue. On the reverse hand, or the other hand, if I just say if it is equal to string, then it's gonna go ahead and say, hey, you know what? Whenever it's gonna be equal to string, just continue. So we are gonna get just the number. There we go. But on the other hand, if I just again revert it back to not equal to string, and I use another keyword, which is break, break is like break. It's gonna say, hey, just stop everything. Do not continue, do not do anything else after this, just stop everything. So what happens in this case is, as soon as it matches the condition, it's gonna stop the execution, and rest of the code or rest of the block of the for loop is not gonna execute after that. Very subtle difference between break and continue. They are always a lifesaver, and you're gonna be using them much often uh, what you are thinking right now, so be cautious about them. Okay, so quite a lot of stuff, but still uh, we haven't even touched the basics, even the ground of the loop, it is so much in depth. And especially in the modern JavaScript, we have got for loop, for each, for in, for of, a whole lot of them are there, which we definitely want to touch at least a little bit for a few of them. Okay, enough of this, let's catch up in the next video. Hit that subscribe, visit learncodeonline.in or join me up on Instagram, we'll have fun. Let's catch up in the next one.